Bible, which is, for reasons I imagine you can divine, as unlisted as it can possibly be. <laughs> What's weird is that these gifts are very specific to things that I love. Like, I will be listening to a disco station, don't fucking judge me, <laughs> on Pandora, and a couple of days later, the Bee Gees box set will show up from Amazon. Just the whole collection. Because I think Nightmare is a pretty good song. Or uh, I'll be really excited about a video game coming out. And uh, the new uh, Grand Theft Auto V will show up actually being driven into my house by a guy. Directly into my house in a car. Like a super deluxe edition of the game will show up. Or like I'll watch Mad Men and I'll think, I probably need one of those suits. One of those suits shows up a couple of days later. It's very weird. Right? And it's not stuff that I talk about on social media. I talk about it with my, with my friends and my family and stuff. Well, it began to get really creepy and super weird when the horse head mask showed up. <laughs> Before I had ever done the horse head thing on Twitter, just the horse head mask showed up. That's actually the mask. This is when Anne, my wife, realized that my secret admirer is drunk me. <laughs> She's 
uh, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, and, and she, like, all the nerds are, like, calling out the number. I think, I gotta see, I gotta do your math for you. And it's just, I think it's 30 Okay, so, um, uh, I, uh, I went up to visit her. I'm so excited to go and see, and go see her, because even though she's, she's like, she's, she's a woman, and she's married, and I, I love her husband, and, but in my mind, she's, like, still a teenager, and she's always going to be my little baby sister. And like, my brother's only four years younger than me, but he's always going to be my little baby brother, and that's just, like, it's part of being a big brother. It never changes. It's also part of being a father. Whenever my, my son Ryan is 23 years old, and whenever, Ryan, 24 years old, fuck me. <laughs> whenever, whenever Ryan, Ryan comes and meets us sometimes, sometimes when we're in cities, whenever he walks away to go get on the airplane to go back to uh, Arizona where he lives, when we go back to California, I watch him and I try not to cry because I feel like I'm watching my six-year-old go to his first day of first grade as he walks down the, the, the thing there. And, like, and it's really, like, it's, it's tough to do. But it's just a thing that happens, right? So I go up to see my sister and her husband and her baby. I'm so excited to see him for the first time. And we walk. And I walk up the, the driveway at their house. And I'm like, we're going to be, we're going to be, no. I call him Batman. We're going to be Batman. <laughs> My sister and her husband open the door, and there, there she is, and there he is. And my sister is just like raging. She's a mom, and her husband is so proud of her. And she's got my little nephew on, on her hip. And that part of my brain that thinks she's still 17 years old jumps and takes control. And I look at my brother-in-law, and I go, did you fuck my sister? <laughs> familiar process of apologizing for me. <laughs> and as we walked into the house, I realized it was okay. They have a baby. They never have to have sex again. <laughs> That's fine. And also, he is a father now with an infant. So soul-crushing responsibility is going to be a way better deterrent to sex than I could ever possibly <laughs> So we go inside, and she says, so the reason we want you to be the Hebrews Godfather is because we want to, um, we want you to help him become a nerd. <laughs> because our mom, mom and dad aren't nerds. My, uh, my brother's not a nerd. She's not a nerd. My brother-in-law is the opposite of a nerd. He's a football guy. And she was like, you, you need, we need you to help him get that nerd gene, because no one's really sure how the nerd gene is passed along. It's clearly not genetic. Science doesn't understand the nerd gene, which is very ironic. <laughs> but we've learned that it has to be taught. So she's like, we want you to be the kid's godfather to teach you how to be a nerd. And I was like, I am on it. <laughs> Went home. I bought, to, uh, went to thinkgeek.com. I bought him everything. <laughs> and I had it shipped there. It's like two pallets. It weighs like roughly the equivalent of a car. And my sister calls me up and she says, Yeah, so, um, what the fuck am I supposed to do with all of this stuff? <laughs> And I go, well, um, first of all, you're welcome. <laughs> well, he's four months old. What am I supposed to do with a solar radiometer? Uh, put it in the sun, Amy, and science happens. That's literally it. <laughs> Why did you buy him a sword? Okay, first of all, it's not a sword. It's Sting from The Hobbit. It alerts you to the presence of orcs. It is also a great nightlight. Why did you get him another sword? It's Long Claw. What am I supposed to do with it? I don't know. Make a mobile and put it above the crib so you can see it. <laughs> My brother-in-law, as I said, 
is a football fan. But he's not just a football fan. He's the very worst kind of football fan. He's a Dallas Cowboys fan. Oh! I know. I know. Get it out. Let it come out. to give about football. That feels so... That is how I imagine the milk working on my dick. This, this battle for the eternal soul of my nephew. And it's sort of like, I am, uh, I am uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Right? And, and my, my little nephew is uh, his young Anakin Skywalker. And my brother-in-law, Dallas Cowboys <laughs> Shane a little football, I buy him a giant set of oversized foam baby's first polyhedral dice. Yeah. He buys him a football helmet, I buy him an X-wing pilot's helmet. Yeah. He buys him a football jersey, I get him a Wesley Crusher sweater. <laughs> He's gonna be so glad that I do that the first time he needs the polarity reversed on his wild beard. <laughs> concerned about the world that my uh, godson is going to grow up in. Uh, I feel like the things that kids have to worry about today are really lame. Uh, and I say that as a member of the Genera hypercolor t-shirt generation. <laughs> I say that as a member of the generation who went through the mullets. Okay? And the muscle builder pants. And the fanny pack. My dad still kind of lives there.